Madame Ravens. This way to the library. She's been expecting you. Hello, my darlings. Today, I am bringing you more of the Book of Werewolves by Sabine Baring Gould. They have been well liked in the past, and it's been a while. So today, I bring you A Chamber of Horrors. Dun, dun, dun. Pierre Bergot and Michael Verdung, me hermit of Saint Bonnet, the Galliad family, Thevian Page, the tailor of Chalons Roulet. In December 1521, the Inquisitor General for the Diocese of Bessacon, Bong by name, heard a case of sufficiently terrible nature produced a sensation of alarm in the neighborhood. Two men were under accusation of witchcraft and cannibalism. Their names were Pierre Bergon, or Peter the Great, as people had nicknamed him from his stature, and Michel Verdun. Peter had not been long under trial, for he volunteered a full confession of his crimes. It amounted to this. About 19 years before, on the occasion of the New Year's market at Poligny, a terrible storm had broken over the country. And among other mischiefs done by it was the scattering of Pierre's flock. In vain, said the prisoner, did I labor in company with other peasants to find the sheep and bring them together. I went everywhere in search of them. Then there rode up three black horsemen, and the last one said to me, Whither away? You seem to be in trouble. I related to him my misfortune with my flock. He bade me pluck up my spirits and promised that his master would henceforth take charge of and protect my flock. If I would only rely on him, he told me as well that I should find my stray sheep very shortly, and he promised to provide me with money. We agreed to meet again in four or five days. My flock I soon found collected together. At my second meeting, I learned of the stranger that he was a servant of the devil. I foreswore God and on Our Lady and all the saints and dwellers in paradise. I renounced Christianity, kissed his left hand, which was black and ice cold as that of a corpse. Then I fell on my knees and gave my allegiance to Satan. I remained in the surface of the devil for two years and never entered a church before the end of Mass, or at all. Events until holy water had been sprinkled according to the desire of my master, whose name I afterwards learned was Moise. All anxiety about my flock was removed, for the devil had undertaken to protect it and keep off the wolves. This freedom from care, however, made me begin to tire of the devil's service, and I recommended my attendance at church until I was brought back into obedience by the evil one, by Michel Verdun, when I renewed my compact on the understanding that I should be supplied with money. In a wood near Chassel Charmant, we met with many others whom I did not recognize. We danced, and each had in his or her hand a green taper with a blue flame, Still under the delusion that I should obtain money, Michel persuaded me to move with the greatest celerity in order to do this. After I had stripped myself, he smeared me with a slab, which I believed myself to be transformed into a wolf. I was at first somewhat horrified at my four wolf's feet and the fur with which I was covered all at once. And in order to do this, after I had stripped myself, he smeared me with salve, which I believed myself to be transformed into a wolf. I was at first somewhat horrified by my four wolf's feet, and with the fur with which I covered all at once. 
but I found that I could now travel with speed of the wind. This could not have taken place without the help of our powerful master, who was present during our excursion, though I did not perceive him till I had recovered my human form. Michel did the same as myself. When we had been one or two hours in this condition of metamorphosis, Michel smeared us again, and quick as thought, we resumed our human forms. The salve was given to by our masters. To me it was given to Moise, to Michel, by his own master, Guillemin. Pierre declared that he felt no exhaustion after his excursions, though the judge inquired particularly whether he felt that prostration after his unusual exertion. Though the judge inquired particularly whether he felt prostration after his unusual exertion, of which you witches usually complained, indeed the exhaustion consequent on a werewolf raid was so great that the lycanthropist was often confined to his bed for days and could hardly move hand or foot, much in the same way as the berserker and the ham ramir in the north were utterly prostrate after their fit had left them. In one of his werewolf runs, Pierre fell upon a boy of six or seven years old, with his teeth intending to rend and devour him. But the lad screamed so loud that he was obliged to beat a retreat to his clothes and smear himself again in order to recover his form and escape detection. He and Michel, however, one day, tore to pieces a woman as she was gathering peas, and a Monsieur de Cholnay, who came to her rescue, was attacked by them and killed. On another occasion they fell upon a little girl of four years old and ate her up, with the exception of one arm. Michel thought the flesh most delicious. Another girl was strangled by them, and her blood lapped up. Of a third they ate merely a portion of the stomach. One evening at dusk, Pierre leapt over a garden wall and came upon a little maiden of nine years old, engaged upon the weeding of the garden beds. She fell on her knees and entreated Pierre to spare her, but he snapped her neck and left her a corpse, lying among her flowers. On this occasion he does not seem to have been in his wolf shape. He fell upon a goat which he found in the field of Pierre Le Rouen, and bit it in the throat, but he killed it with a knife. Michel was transformed in his clothes into a wolf, but Pierre was obliged to strip, and the metamorphosis could not take place with him unless he was stark naked. He was unable to account for the manner in which the hair vanished when he recovered his natural condition. The statements of Pierre Bergot were fully corroborative of Michel Verdun. During the closing of autumn, 1573, the peasants of the neighborhood of Dole in Francais-Comet-Comte were authorized by the, com the court of parliament at Dole to hunt down the werewolves which infested the country. The authorization was as follows, according to the advertisement made to the sovereign count of parliament at Dole, that in the territories of Spani, Savon, Corchapon, and the neighboring villages has often been seen and met for some time past a werewolf who, it is said, has already seized and carried off several little children so that they have not been seen since. And since he attacked and done injury in the country to some horsemen who kept him of only with great difficulty and danger to the persons, said the court, desiring to prevent any great danger, has permitted and does permit those who are abiding or dwelling in the said place and desiring to prevent any greater danger, has permitted and does permit those who are abiding or dwelling in said places and others notwithstanding all edicts concerning the chase, to assemble with pikes, halberts, albercues, and sticks to chase and to pursue the said werewolf, 
in every place where they may find or seize him to tie and to kill without incurring any pains or penalties given at the meeting of said court on the 13th of the day of, of the month of September 1573. It was some time, however, before the Lou Guru was caught. So in other words, the courts told him, eh, get together a mob and take care of it. In a retiring spot near Amange, half shrouded in trees, stood a small hovel of the rudest construction. Its roof was of turf, and its walls were blotched with lichen. The garden to this cot was run to waste, and the fence round it broke through. As the hovel was far from any road, and was only reached by a path over moorland and through forest, it was seldom visited and the couple who lived in it were not such as would make many friends. The man, Giles Gamir, was somber, ill-looking fellow, who walked in a stooped attitude, whose pale face, livid complexion, and deep-set eyes under a pair of coarse and bushy brows, which met across the forehead, were sufficient to repel any one form seeking his acquaintance. Giles seldom spoke, and when he did, it was of the broadest patrols of his country. His long gray beard and retiring habits procured for him the name of the Hermit of St. Bonon, though no one for a moment attributed to him any extraordinary amount of sanctity. The Hermit does not seem to have been suspected for some time, but one day, as some of the peasants of Chastinoy were returning home from their work, through the forest, the screams of a child and the deep baying of a wolf attracted their notice, and on running in the direction whence the cry sounded, they found a little girl defending herself against a monstrous creature, which was attacking her tooth and nail, and had already wounded her severely in five places. As the peasants came up, the creature fled on all fours into the gloom of the thicket. It was so dark that it could not be identified with certainty, and while some affirmed that it was a wolf, others thought they had recognized the features of the hermit. This took place on the 8th of November. On the 14th, a little boy of ten years old went missing, who had been last seen a short distance from the gates of Dole. The hermit of St. Bonon was now seized and brought to trial at Dole, with the following evidence was extracted from him and his wife, and substantiated by many particulars by witnesses. On the last day of Michaelmas, under the form of a wolf at a mile from Dole, in the farm of Gorge, a vineyard belonging to Chesnoy, near the wood of La Serre, Giles Gagnier had attacked a little maiden of ten or twelve years old and had slain her with his teeth and claws. He had drawn her into the woods, stripped her, gnawed the flesh from her legs and arms, and had enjoyed his meal so much that, inspired with conjugal affection, oh laws, he had brought some of the flesh home for his wife, Apolline, eight days after the Feast of All Saints, Again in the form of a werewolf, he had seized another girl near the meadow land of La Pope, on the territory of Athnum and Chasnoy, and was on the point of slaying and devouring her when three persons came up and he was compelled to escape. On the fourteenth day after All Saints, also as a wolf, he attacked a boy of ten years old, a mile from Dole, between... Grensens and Menor, and had strangled him. On that occasion, he had eaten all the flesh off his legs and arms, and had also devoured a great part of the belly. One of the legs had rent completely from the trunk with his fangs. On Friday before the last feast of St. Bartholomew, he had seized a boy of twelve or thirteen under a large pear tree near the wood of the village of Perros, and had drawn him into the thicket and killed him. 
intending to eat him as he had eaten the other children. But the approaching men hindered him from fulfilling his intentions. The boy, however, was quite dead, and the men who came up declared that Giles appeared as a man and not a wolf. The hermit of St. Pognon was sentenced to be dragged to the place of public execution and there to be burned alive, a sentence which was rigorously carried out. In the instance of the poor Manic fully believing that actual transformation into a wolf took place, he was apparently perfectly reasonable on other points and quite conscious of the acts he had committed. We come now to a more remarkable circumstance, the affliction of a whole family with the same form of insanity. Our information is derived from Burgos' Discourse de Sorcerie, 1603 to 1610. Pernet Gandelon was a poor girl in the Jura who, in 1598, ran about the country on all fours in the belief that she was a wolf. One day, as she was ranging the country in a fit of lycanthropic madness, she came upon two children who were plucking wild strawberries. Filled with a sudden passion for blood, she flew at the little girl and would have brought her down had not her brother, a lad of four years old, defended her lustily with a knife. Uh -oh, when you're sending a four-year-old out to pick strawberries, always remember to give them a knife, people. Oh, yeah, well, <laughs> much wilder times. Bernay, however, wrenched the weapon from his tiny hand, flung him down, and gashed his throat so that he died of the wound. Bernay was torn to pieces by the people in their rage and horror. Directly after, Pierre, the brother of Pernay, Galidon, was accused of witchcraft. He was charged with having led children to the Sabbath, having made hell, and having run about the country in the form of a wolf. The transformation was effected by means of a salve which he had received from the devil. He had on one occasion assumed the form of a hare, but usually he appeared as a wolf, and his skin became covered with shaggy gray hair. He readily acknowledged that the charges brought against him were well formed, and he allowed that he had, during the period of his transformation, fallen on and devoured both beast and human beings. When he desired to recover his true form, he rolled himself in the dewy grass. His son, Georges, asserted that he had also been anointed with the salve, and had gone to the Sabbath in the shape of a wolf. According to his own testimony, he had taken upon two goats in one of his expeditions. One Moundy Thursday night. One Moundy Thursday night, he had lain for three hours in his bed in a cataleptic state, and at the end of that time had sprung out of bed. During this period, he had been in the form of a wolf to the witch's Sabbath. His sister, Antoinette, confessed that she had made hail and that she had sold herself to the devil who had appeared to her in the shape of a black he-goat. She had been to the Sabbath on several occasions. Dost thou wish to live deliciously? Sorry, it had to be said. <clears throat> Pierre and Georges in prison, behaved as maniacs, running on all fours about their cells and howling dismally. Their faces, arms, and legs were frightfully scarred with the wounds they had received from dogs when they had been on their raids. Bouguet accounts for the transformation not taking place by the fact of their not having the necessary salves by them. All three... Pierre, Georges, and Antoinette were hung and burned. Well, at least they were hung first. Thienne Paget, who was a witch of the most unmistakable character, was also changed into a she-wolf, according to her own confession, in which she had often accompanied the devil over hill and dale, slaying cattle and falling on and devouring children. 
The same thing may be said of Claudia, Clara, Isan Prost, a lame woman, Clara Isan Gilliam, and Isan Roquet, who owned to the murder of five children. On the 14th of December, in the same year as the execution of the Gandilion family, 1598, a tailor of Chalons was sentenced to the flames by the Parliament of Paris for lycanthropy. This wretched man had decoyed children into a shop or attacked them in the gloaming when they strayed in the woods, had torn them with their teeth and killed them, after which he seemed calmly to have dressed their flesh as ordinary meat and to have eaten it with great relish. The number of little innocents who were destroyed is unknown. A whole cask full of bones was discovered in the house. The man was perfectly heartened, and the details of his trial were so full of horrors and abominations of all kind that the judge ordered the documents to be burned. Again in 1598, a year memorial in the annals of Lanca a year memorable in the annals lycanthropy, a trial took place in Angiers, the details of which are very terrible. In a wild and unfrequented spot near Cald, some countrymen came one day upon the corpse of a boy of fifteen, horribly mutilated and besplattered with blood. As the men approached, two wolves, which had been rending the body, bound away into the thicket. The men gave chase immediately, following their bloody tracks until they lost them, when suddenly, crouching among the bushes, his teeth chattering with fear, they found a man, half-naked, with long hair and beard, and with his hands dyed in blood. His nails were long as claws, and were clotted with fresh gore and shreds of human flesh. This is one of the most puzzling and peculiar cases which come under our notice. The wretched man, whose name was Roulet, of his own accord stated that he had fallen upon the lad and killed him by smothering him, and that he had been prevented from devouring the body completely by the arrival of the men on the spot. Roulet provided on investigation to be a beggar from house to house in most abject state of poverty. His companions in Mend cities were his brother John and his cousin Julian. He had been giving lodgings out of charity in a neighboring village, but before his apprehension he had been absent for eight days. Before the judges, Roulet acknowledged that he was able to transform himself into a wolf by means of a salve which his parents had given him. When questioned about the two wolves which had been seen leaving the corpse, he said that he knew perfectly well who they were for they were his companions, Jean and Julian, who possessed the same secret as himself. He was shown the clothes he had worn the day of the seizure, and he recognized them immediately. He described the boy whom he had murdered, gave the date correctly, indicated the precise spot where the deed had been done, and recognized the father of the boy as the man who had first run up when the screams of the lad had been heard. In prison, Roulet behaved like an idiot. When seized, his belly was distended and hard. In prison, he drank one evening a whole pailful of water, and from that moment refused to eat or drink. His parents, on inquiry, proved to be respectable and pious people, and they proved that his brother Jean and his cousin Julian had been engaged at a distance on the day of Roulet's apprehension. "'What is your name and what is your estate?' asked the judge. "'Pierre Herault. "'My name is Jacques Roulet. "'My age, thirty-five, I am poor and a mendicant. "'What are you accused of having done? "'Of being a thief, I have offended God. "'My parents gave me an ointment. "'I do not know its composition.' When rubbed with this ointment, do you become a wolf? No, but for all that, I killed and ate the child, Cognier. I was a wolf. Were you dressed as a wolf? 
I was dressed as I am now. I had my hands and my face bloody because I had eaten the flesh of the said child. Do your hands and feet become paws of a wolf? Yes, they do. Does your head become that of a wolf? Your mouth larger? I do not know how my head was at the time. I used my teeth. My head was as it is today. I have wounded and eaten many other little children. I have also been to the Sabbath. The Lieutenant Criminel sentenced Roulet to death. He, however, appealed to the Parliament de Paris, and this decided that there was more folly in the poor idiot than malice and witchcraft. His sentence of death should be commuted to two years' imprisonment in a madhouse, that he might be instructed in the knowledge of God, whom he had forgotten in his utter poverty. So quoth this raven. Uh, I didn't mention it before, but Sabine Baring Gould <clears throat> was a pastor. Uh, for the Church of England, and wrote hymns and books in that subject as well. But we all have our dark passions, don't we, my dears? Uh, that's why I'm reading this and you are listening. <laughs> have a lovely day. Ow! Cat! Thank you so kindly for stopping by my chateau, my darlings. It does mean so much to me. Please, if you have not subscribed, as many of you have not, please do so. Give me a like so I know what you would like to hear. And comment. I always love to read your comments. And special thanks to my Patreon and membership supporters. Ciao, darlings. <laughs>